Hey, this is Mike Carew, and I wanted to come at you with a bit of a special episode tonight. I don't know if you've noticed or not, but yeah, I referenced Terrence McKenna quite a bit. So it's probably apparent to you that yeah, Terrence is one of my, I guess you could call them mentors. I was going to say idols, but yeah, I don't put him on a pedestal. Um, I just have a, a good amount of respect for him because, you know, as much as I admire uh, his intellectual and his, you know, introspective and his analytical abilities, um, I have fairly criticized him as well uh, in other areas. But I wanted to kind of do an in depth analysis of my views and my feelings about Terrence McKenna the man, the myth and his legacy um, one of the things I have shared in the past is my critique of his uh, preaching psychedelics usage you know as a, uh, a way of really is in his interpretation the only way of accessing spiritual truth as he called it or spiritual reality um, granted I did uh, experiment with psychedelics when I was younger uh, but yeah I don't believe that uh, as he did that psychedelics are a requirement for accessing spiritual reality now did my experimentation with psychedelics when I was younger, you know, late teens, early 20s, did that experimentation open up doorways that would have otherwise remained closed uh, that have allowed me in my adulthood to access what I call actual reality, but what Terrence and many others call spiritual reality? The uh, truth is, I don't know. I don't know the answer to that question. It's possible that, you know, had it not been for my experimentation with psychedelics in my youth, that I would not be able to access what I refer to as actual reality. Uh, but it's also possible that I would be able to access it even if I would have never tried or experimented with psychedelics. The point is, um, I think Terrence realized in his late in his life and acknowledged that he had made some naive assumptions in his preaching about uh, the importance of using psychedelics to access spiritual truth. Uh, he acknowledged this in one of my favorite uh, interviews. He brutally destroyed the uh, psychedelic spiritual new age community with just a few sentences and he also acknowledged or took responsibility for some of the blame in guiding people down this path um, it's a lecture about political correctness which he also uh, brutally but very tastefully destroyed in just a few sentences uh, a very articulately delivered sentences but yeah back to the psychedelics because really it connects in with the political correctness um, is that he saw a connection uh, between the two and what he noted was that many in his audience as he called them many of his followers he was not at all comfortable with and the reasons he gave for not being comfortable with them is that he believed that psychedelic usage should have made anyone uh, you know who was connected to actual reality should have made them immune to the whole you know political correctness virus as he called it the social virus is exactly what he called it and that's a great way of describing it but what he noticed is that many who followed his path and engaged in heavy psychedelics usage uh, he noted that basically the psychedelics just appeared to 
turned their minds to mush and made them much more susceptible to this social virus of political correctness. And so he criticized them very well, and he also criticized himself for that. Um, what I admire about Terrence, it, it, it has absolutely nothing to do with psychedelics. What I admire the most about Terrence uh, is his, as he described it, his scientific method approach to analyzing, interpreting, and just making observations about different belief systems. Um, he was trying to get at the truth. That much is absolutely self-evident. That was his mission, the truth. And, you know, I think he, he, he uncovered and, and shined light upon a large amount of truth that I, I think anyway, previously uh, remained unknown and has gained much more traction in the the public collective consciousness or whatever you want to call it um, than it would have had he never existed uh, so one of the lectures that I really I was uh, shocked and blown away by was a lecture he gave about the uh, something Trismegistus, I can't remember the name, I've heard the book mentioned before, I've never read it, but he, he gave a very in-depth analysis of it that was condensed into about an hour lecture, and yeah, he started this lecture by saying, I'm, I'm tired of talking about psychedelics. He's like, I'm wanting to talk about something that's really important. And you could tell he had assembled some kind of small group that he considered this a very special occasion. And he delivered, I mean, just some mind-blowing analysis of this book. Uh, but what I noticed as he's delivering this analysis is how closely it lines up from a different angle, but even so, nevertheless, how closely it lines up with the the truth that I've been able to glean from the Tao Te Ching and the way of Chang Tzu, the Taoism angle, which Terence also referenced quite frequently. But what he makes note of in this one hour lecture, what he stated was that one must be able to hold two contradictory ideas simultaneously uh, and this is very well referenced in Taoism and it really to me represents the solution or the answer to the entire riddle yeah, the solution to the entire equation is being able to hold two contradictory ideas simultaneously if you look at the uh, at the yin yang what it represents to me is those two contradictory ideas that when you look at you've got the white side and the black side but then there's the circle that is the whole that those two contradictory viewpoints represent and, and this to me has, has opened all of the doors you know, in my own opinion, in my own experience. And others can say, no, nah, that's not right, and they can reference this book or that book, and that's fine. Everyone is free to believe whatever they choose to believe. But for me, what this has done is I, it's eliminated the need for belief altogether. And that's another thing that I think Terrence excelled at, and, and, and like no other I've ever witnessed personally, is in his ability to step into different belief systems and to observe them fairly, not in a, an effort to debunk them, not at all, but in an effort to understand them and to glean whatever truth he was able to glean from it. Because all different belief systems have elements of truth. There's no doubt about it. It doesn't matter what lens, what spiritual lens you look at life through, you can rest assured that, yeah, there is truth there. Uh, and so 
that was the way he approached it is he would uh, you know he would put on the sunglasses you know the let's just say the christianity sunglasses and he could look at that belief system through those through that lens but i would suggest that what gave him the ability to do that is the understanding of this type of thinking that he very clearly described in this lecture he gave um i may at some point read that book i may not just his translation of it was enough for me to say hmm that lines up very well with what Taoism has revealed to me and i could almost just leave it there but part of me is curious and wants to go down that rabbit hole uh you know but being able to hold two contradictory viewpoints simultaneously right that type of thinking it, it opened up the doors that i believe terence had most definitely opened up as well where he began to recognize that you know what we have always referred to as god and as a higher power is actually no higher no lower than we are and just wants to be our partner it's it's like a 50 50 almost kind of relationship where we and our you know all of the things we've been taught in our different spiritual schools of thought have been taught to look at god as towering above us and ready to condemn or cast judgment on us or give us our blessings because we did everything exactly as it's lined out yeah, lined up in this book and that book and whatever but Taoism comes along and it 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 suggests the same thing it, that you know there it's it's a you know if you want to call it god he's right beside you he's not above you or below you he's like it, this may sound blasphemous to a lot of religious folks but he's on an equal footing with us he's our shadow in a way he's like he is us he's just you know the the us that it, the the entity that is operating us and all it takes is this you know this ability that we have to practice and develop for ourselves but the ability to hold two contradictory ideas simultaneously however you want to label that i mean that is the key and again the, another key that i had have discovered upon opening these doors is that really the key that allows us to gain that awareness is the acknowledgement that i am no better and i am no worse than any other being in the universe and when i really own that and acknowledge that that's when whatever you want to call it i prefer the universe i just whatever you want to call it god you want to call it Tao, allah that's when it revealed itself it's almost like that's what it took is like that's what it's waiting for is for you to acknowledge that you're no better and you're no worse and then it's right there and like yeah i'm no better and no worse than you we're right here on the same even playing field i'm not towering above you and or below you ready to drag you to hell i'm right here beside you i've been here the whole time you just didn't understand or, and weren't aware of that because these different beliefs were blocking me from you it really is that simple is that it boils down to no beliefs is what gets you access to what we call god or Tao or allah or whatever else and it's no beliefs and an acknowledgement that i'm no better no worse and then voila it appears you know, however it's going to appear to you i'm not going to try to define how that will happen all i can do is share with you how it happened for me and terence shares some very similar experiences the way he describes it is like there's this helping affectionate entity that is trying to make contact with us and you know he refers to it as the mystery i like that way of describing it because all these different words they lock us into these concrete concepts that yeah, 
upon deeper analysis in my own experience they're just faults they're attempts at trying to describe the indescribable and that's why i definitely like the way the Tao Te Ching starts off and that it, it you know Lao Tzu clearly states there at the beginning that he says those who talk don't know those who know don't talk yet he continues talking and trying to explain exactly what he meant by that this seems to be something with just part of our human experience we can't help ourselves but to try to describe the, the experience that is ultimately indescribable words fall short they just do this is beyond words and concepts and language altogether other than you know the communication is just it's beyond all that and it's when you experience it you you get what that means to a degree but you know uh yeah i mean the Tao Te Ching does a very good job of explaining as much as it can while reinforcing that look this can't be explained adequately it must be experienced and when experienced good luck trying to describe it my contention is that you'll only be able to describe it with its guidance and only be able to describe what it wants described how it wants it to be described but that's the best I can do at trying to translate my experience but there's no doubt after listening to hundreds and probably thousands of hours of Terrence McKenna lectures that he clearly understood this and he was trying to help people get to this ultimate truth uh, as much as he could and I do think that you know he, he recognized in his later days that just you know a one size fits all recommendation of psychedelics usage is not the answer but again you know does it open up doorways that would have otherwise remained closed i don't know i really don't i wonder about this to myself often but all i can tell you is that it's not a requirement it, e even if say it's a requirement to open up these doors of perception at least in, in your initial kind of formative years later in life it's not at all a requirement i mean I, that's a guarantee just based on my own direct experience i don't use psychedelics now in fact i would turn them down if they were offered to me yeah i can say that truthfully because i have regardless of whether the doorways were already opened or not i've opened my own doors now without psychedelics and i'm much more confident with the truth that i'm in contact with without the psychedelics uh personally and that's my own personal preference do whatever works for you but i do regardless still have terence to thank for demonstrating to me the techniques uh it, you could just say the truth seeking techniques the you know the approach to analyzing and to and making just you know objective observations about different belief systems yeah i for sure i it, i learned from him you know this ability i credit him for teaching me how to do this um and it in my opinion does not require psychedelics at all and uh so that i wanted to share and uh you know some of the criticisms i've had you know i've shared as far as you know his views of going back to our archaic roots as he called them and the, the shamanic you know like mass orgies <laughs> it's like which i vehemently disagree with as i laugh because yeah i mean but in some ways he's right about that i think what he was getting at with is getting back to archaic roots in that you know regaining the awareness and the memory of what we've forgotten in our amnesia as a species and that that is as he clearly described himself that 
in the past, in our archaic days as a species, we had a direct connection to this truth. I no doubt about it. And we have lost that connection. We've lost that connection as a species. And yeah, it, that connection is with the truth. The truth that is right there waiting beside us. It, the truth is that it's who we are at our core is this truth that you know we have just become disconnected from. And the more of us who can connect back with it and maintain that connection with or without psychedelics. I, you know, I'm not going to sit here and condemn people for using psychedelics. I certainly used them in my younger days, but looking back in all honesty, it was more about the high than it was about exploring my own psyche. And, you know, but you know, I have done a lot more of that in my older years without the psychedelics. And so whatever floats your boat the bottom line is what's important is the truth that's all that's important and so yeah i just wanted to share that because i don't know it was it came to my mind as something that needed to be clarified and stated openly so yeah maybe you got something out of that maybe not uh let me know what you think in the comments uh, this has been mike ruth have a great night